Welcome to episode five of the Slightly Serious Signed Podcast, voted the number one signed podcast in the United States by Laminacore, our friends in Canada, Don Long, the most famous person in the corrugated market. So thank you, Don, for voting us uh, number one. Um, but we got a special treat for you today. So this is our first guest on the Slightly Serious Signed Podcast. Um, we couldn't think of a better guest to have. Um, mainly because he's kind of a true Michigan guy. He might not have been born in Michigan, but he's a true Michigan guy. The reason I know that is he pulled up here in his convertible on a 60-degree day, <laughs> and that means we know you're from Michigan because that's what we do over here. If that had been California, no, you'd have had your winter coat on, bundled up, heat on. <laughs> um, and I know that for sure because I've been out to California. I met Nick from Montreux out from California, and we showed up. It was 85 degrees on. He had a flannel on, and that's not a lie. That is exactly what he does, and if it's 85, he's cold. Tim pulls up in a convertible. But anyways, this is uh, Tim Randall. Um, he's been our rep for Allenson for 30 years or more. Um, but yeah. we're going to get into some stuff with him, um, and we're just going to start right out. And, like, Tim, what, like, what's your history? Like, sure. How would you get into this business? Well, I appreciate that question. And um, I was a blueberry farmer about 40 miles south of here in a little town called Bangor. And my dad sold transformers for a company called Jefferson Electric. We're talking about 45 years ago. Um, easy. My memory's shaky. I'm getting old. But anyway, he convinced me to open up a neon plant in my garage. And it was fun because I drive up here and get my sign supplies. And Rick Manchin was there. Um, it was Harold Sr. at the time, not Harold Jr. It was actually both of them. And their kitchen was up above the, the warehouse. It was on Leonard Street way back in the day. And uh, it was fun. I'd go up and sit with them in the kitchen and have a Diet Coke or whatever and, and visit. Wentzco closed down from noon until 1 o'clock. I couldn't. So if I showed up then, I had to go up and have lunch with senior and junior. Cause, but anyway, um, so I learned how to bend tube. Uh, I was about five years. I, I did some wholesale work up there. I sold a number of the companies in Grand Rapids. And then Gerber came out. And my dad went from being a salesman for Jefferson to being a salesman for Gerber and other companies. He, he started becoming an independent rep. So at that time, he got real busy real quick because Gerber was exploding. And he said, hey, you know, I know you like Ben and too, but how about you come and sell with me? So I did and um, moved to Chicago then for a few years and then down to St. Louis. But I've represented many companies over the year. I've always been an independent, comp uh, independent rep, EGL, Voltark, um, Spraylet, AXO, um, just Cooley, the list goes on and on, Chromatic. Uh, so For you uh, old timers out there, you just you recognized every single name you just said. If you've been in the business, you guys just recognize every single name. If you didn't recognize that name, yeah, you're probably under 30. <laughs> well, and actually it wasn't AXO, it was Wine Dot Paint, and it was owned by a small company, and then AXO bought them, but... Um, just a lot of transitions, but I've always enjoyed being an independent rep and, and still do to this day. Right now I'm down to just Allenson as I'm kind of slowly moving out of the business, but I, I enjoy working with Allenson. Speaking just about Allenson, we're talking about sure. the speed lamps. That's what we wanted to talk about today. So kind of what sets those apart from, you know, the other stuff that's in the LED market right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you go to retrofit a sign in the field and it's got LED, or excuse me, it's got fluorescent bulbs on it. You have a few options. You can bring LEDs and mount them on the back of the sign if it's a one single face sign. You can put LEDs on a stick and use the sockets just to hold that stick in place. You can use a, a product that is pre-made with the LEDs on the stick. Um, and number, you know, there, so there's a lot of options. But what's so nice about speed lamp is with all those other options, you need to use a power supply. And they tend to be relatively power supply hungry, you know, so like an eight footer or two eight footers need their own power supply. So in a big sign, you've got a lot of power supplies and that's a lot of work tying those in, you know, so with the speed lamp, the beauty of the speed lamp is you take the existing ballast that's there and the primary power that's going to that ballast, you take that right to your sockets, you remove the ballast and then you just plug the speed lamps in. So, you know, the cost of it up front might not seem like a saver, but it's very economical when you look at the time spent changing it out and the time in the sign. And, and what another really nice thing about Speedlamp is 
They're designed to be at the same angle that the lamps were. Like a lamp, obviously, it's got 360 degrees. But I've never had anybody come back and say we had shadows or or it didn't light as bright as the lamp did because it really was engineered to replace a, a high output sign lamp. So we talked about uh, you just talked about all the companies that nobody's ever heard of for new people. Can we also talk about for new people how nice it is when we're talking about speed lamps compared to doing like old school neon or even fluorescent yeah. in terms of oh for sure just weight alone. Well, it. That's that's the weight was incredible. A transformer versus a power supply is ridiculous. <laughs> the cost as well, but but the the other two really big things that distinguished LEDs from neon. And again, I grew up as a two better, so I'm I'm still partial neon. I love neon. Um, is the high voltage versus the low voltage? You know, back in 2000, they made us go to protected transformers because of some high profile fires. At that time, it was a nightmare for like three or four years because they kept on tripping when they shouldn't. They were very sensitive. I think most all of us have gotten past that, but that was a huge change. It made LEDs even that more attractive. Um, and then the breakability of lamps and neon glass. And then, and then on top of that, there's the skill needed to, to create a neon sign. You know, again, I, I love neon. I love neon tube benders. But man, when you can hire somebody to put LEDs in a in a channel letter, the manufacturers, it's a hard justification, um, especially when it's going behind plastic. I mean, I still see some beautiful open channel channel letters done with with neon that look super. And we've got some neon alternatives, you know, and, and they're fine. Neon's still neon, though. But but if you're putting a plastic face on it, nobody knows if it's neon or if it's you know whatever it is LEDs. So the ease of use, the, the dependability, um, although neon's awfully dependable, you know, if it doesn't break it, the longevity of neon is, is impressive. But, uh, but yeah, so many changes from, from that, uh, that, that make a lot of sense. When, when LEDs first came out, it was easily 30 to $40 a foot for white that looked frankly like trash. If you lit one up next to a good white today, they were a joke. Then people bought them, though. You know, just because it was such an attractive alternative to yeah. We talked about it earlier because I remember when Sloan used to come on the reel, and it was like seven bucks a module. And not only that, they didn't think they didn't think the reel through. So when you started pulling that reel, if it got tangled, you're screwed. We just ripped the reel apart and throw it across the floor because that was the only way. But yeah, I remember when there was like. Because we sold them by the each. Yes. And people would buy like seven. And it was like <laughs> 49 bucks. I'm like, right. why aren't they doing neon? Right. Like, this is never going to take off. And then as you saw them get lower, it's like, oh, okay. I see what they're going. But yeah, you're right. The, remember they had yellow, white, red, blue, and they were all like just as <laughs> dull as can be. Well, like, Allen's like, makes a great LED, but when we first introduced it, I wish I remember what year it was, but it was a long time ago. Each of ours had to plug in together. So we weren't even on a reel. We were plug and play. Oh, Each LED plugged into the next one. Was yours uh, the one where the wire had to go through at one point? Because remember we no, had... No. Um, remember they had one that the I wire... Did. You had to run the wire all the way through the thing, and that's how they were powered? I wish I remember <laughs> who that was. But yeah, I do remember, remember that, that. But that wasn't us. Um, but you guys, too, I think all distributors early on cut by the each, because it was the only way, unless somebody was going to buy a whole reel. Yep. Um, a lot of... Yeah, yeah, every, yeah every, we all had to sell it by the each, and... The poor guy that got the end of the thing, like he needed nine each, <laughs> and he got nine each, not nine in a row. Like <laughs> he got nine each because they're so tiny. Like they literally cut. had yeah individual had all, ones. Okay, he's got nine. There's you, nine. You literally wire nut each one together. Yes, exactly right. Like it was, it was a nightmare. I think, oh, especially funny. people just getting in now, especially people just getting into electrical. Uh, I don't think they have any idea how good they have it. Like when they're showing up. Like we're getting all like speed lamps, right? Where you're just running into like real like quick connect systems, right? You're not bringing power supplies up in the sign. You're just showing up there, pulling the old ones out, putting the new ones in. You're going home. It's easy, fast, lightweight. You don't need a crane out there versus like when people are doing neon, like we're looking at these transform, like we still sell them, right? The transformers, but they, those things are like 10, 15 pounds a piece. The warehouse guys don't know how good they have yeah, it. No like kidding. when they're picking up electronic ballast versus the old ballast, yes. or they're, they're picking up you know, the ME nines versus like the, the big transformers. Like they have no idea like what we went through. Like it was boards, paint transformers that were heavy. Like no wonder we all are like good arm wrestlers and super strong hands. <laughs> yeah. like, that's you what know, we had to pick up every day. What's interesting about it too, though, is quite honestly, it's a double edged sword because I think 
for some of the old, big, good electrical houses that had the skill and had all this technology and all these LEDs and kind of the ease of, has opened the door for a lot of smaller companies. Now, those smaller companies, a lot of them have design capabilities, and, and don't get me wrong, I think it's fine. But I know it was a frustration because it's like, man, here's a good sign company who's all of a sudden they've got to compete with kind of a startup because the startups can get it now. You know, it's it's not rocket science anymore. And not that it was before, but it was a lot more technically challenging. Yeah, same thing happened in the digital market. You had all the painters and then all of a sudden you can print it. And it's like all these super talented guys that could paint that stuff. Like now you got some kid that's still in high school designing something that looks just like your paint. Well, when I, I still love the paint, though. I, I think I mentioned earlier that, that Gerber came out, and that's kind of what spurred my going into the rep industry and showing the original sign makers. Again, I don't know if it's been 40 years, but I think it's close to that. Some guys got it right away, and the creative ones that like to paint, they would take that and run with it, and they'd still use the design but but add their own flair to it. But there was a pretty good handful that were like, no way, you know, I'm a painter. I don't want to cut vinyl. And there's still some of those guys out there, and, and they do beautiful work. Man, Pinspert stripers, oh, my gosh, it's a lost art. But but so many of the smarter ones, in my estimation, I don't mean to, to you know, demean anybody, but they got it, and they used both their skills and what the computer could bring to make the best sign. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, so, like, how have you seen the industry change? And I'll just give you, like, a quick, like, our perspective on it. So what, what we've seen, at least, you're talking about you used to bend neon, so we've seen that kind of go away. But what's actually happened is people that are doing sign painting and people that are bending neon, they basically went through a period where they were kind of obsolete. The ones that made it through that now are in super high demand is what we're seeing. Basically, there's just not a lot of people bending neon. So they only have a few options. They can charge more than they probably did before. Same with hand, like anyone hand painting, right? There's not very many people hand painting. So if you come into that application, we're just seeing people charge more money for it because now it's a now it's not a commodity product, right? It's very skilled labor and there's not a lot of people doing it anymore. It's, it's such a good point. And I think um, my favorite show, I don't know, I know you guys have been talking about shows, but my favorite one I used to love to go to, and I've been out of touch with it, was Letterheads. And Letterheads, they would get all these sign painters together and typically, not always, but go to a small town. There was a town up in Minnesota where they had a meet and they do these big wall murals and kind of transform the town over a long weekend of drinking and partying and sharing stories and letterheads and meets were, were really fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it's changed so much. And I think I appreciate what you said, Tyler, because I think it's brought the high end skills in more demand. And obviously there's not a huge market. It's more of a niche market, but those guys are doing well. The ones that were able to, to stick through it and can still bend glass. Um, I get asked all the time, you know, do you know of a good two bender? It's like, Sure. You know, but there's only a few of them, one in each town maybe now. Yeah. Yeah. We see it. I mean, they obviously come in here and they're, 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 they're a funny, they're a funny breed. They remind me of like the new styles, the rap guys, but like, you know, he'll come in five pounds today, five pounds tomorrow, five pounds the next day. It's like, and it's Bob, Bob just order 25. Nah, I just get what I need. Like, <laughs> otherwise I might break it. Blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, he's one of our favorite customers that comes in here all the time and well, that does, that reminds me of my early days when I come up, Rick Mansion was working in the warehouse, who was your purchasing agent for a long time. And he, uh, he'd get so frustrated with me because I was the same way. Give me five pounds of 10 mil, you know, purple or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, Tim, you know, I was like, no, you, I'm driving all the way from Bangor, you know, 45 minutes and I need just a few pounds, but I need it. You know, and I'm a kid. I don't have any money. So, but you guys, yeah, you'd wrap up one piece for me, 10 pieces, by the pound, it was a riot. Yeah, we still do it. Still do it out, you know, not every day like we used to, but like still have those guys that come in and two pounds, five pounds, three pounds, five yeah. pounds. And we love those guys though too, so. Yeah, because you can charge them more. Yeah, we can charge them more. <laughs> we, can, we can soak you. I don't think Bob's listening. Just, know that we're soaking them. There's just, I mean, there's just not a lot of us out there selling neon anymore. Like we're getting, we're getting a lot of demand for it, but we can't, it's not something we can ramp up, right? We're not going to ship glass across the country. Like it's not a, it's just not an ADC product to, to ship and sell. So no, it's it, kind it, of, it's kind of been a commodity, uh, skilled has become a commodity, but also like the people selling it have, have been. Yeah, we, I think well, the so. smart distributors that, that are still, I don't mean smart, but, but in the electrical industry, it's hard to find a distributor with as much glass and electrodes and all those supplies. And the reason is they don't move as fast. So if you really want to take care of your customer and you've got all those things, 
you know, it's, it's a real service to them. And I think a lot of them appreciate it. Yeah. And, and I can, you know, for all of us distributors, we all kind of have the same computer system where you're not selling enough per branch that your computer system saying, Hey, bring it in. And that's where we had to step back and go like, wait a minute, we need to, we need to break this down as a total company because a total company, yes, we're buying enough. We should bring it in. But per branch, it was saying no. So then all of a sudden we didn't have any stock anywhere. Right. So we had to take a step back and go like, wait a minute, we got to have all this stuff somewhere. And not a lot of distributors do that. Not a lot of distributors realize like, cause your computer system saying, Hey, you only sell two pounds, you know, every three months, you shouldn't bring it into stock. Well, the reality is you have seven locations selling two pounds per month. When you add all that up, no, the computer system would say, Hey, you need to bring it sure. in stock. Sure. And that's what we recognize. That's why we brought it in here. Uh, we brought it in Cleveland. We brought it in Kentucky. And we did realize when we did that, people found us in a hurry. And we did the same thing with paint. We brought in one shot paint, like, because all of a sudden it didn't say when we opened Cleveland, we brought in one shot paint. The following week, it was all gone. I'll be there. Like, everybody found it. Like, and it's amazing how many people find it on the web. Like, because it was all web based and we shipped it all over the country. And I was like, wait, we got to bring it back in. So it's, hmm. it's funny that not a lot of people were stocking it. Sure. And we weren't either. So, like, we were in the same boat, but when we opened that branch, there was a sign painter there. So I brought in basically one of every color and literally the entire nation bought one of every (laughs) color and they were out as, as people who appreciate signs just because that's what we do for a living. Right. That's, that's all we ever get to talk about. We we would love neon to come back, right? You're like, it'd be awesome if neon made a comeback, but as someone who has to sell it and wrap it and ship it and not break glass, you're also like, I'm not sure I need it to come back though. I would love for it to, but man, is it a hard product to deal with, which makes sense why well, we're one of the few people that keep it in stock. Like it's just not an easy product to deal with, unfortunately. So that's for sure. That's where we've gotten really lucky. Like LEDs where it's, I mean, it's mostly plastic, right? That's what we're talking about. So it's like, they're just way easier to deal with. They're easier to ship. They're easier to, to put on a truck. Like it's just, yeah, you don't have to worry product. about it. If you, dr- if you do drop them, you just pick them back up and put them on the car. <laughs> yeah, just put, <laughs> put them back in the sign. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, so the other thing we want to talk to you about, so we saw a lot of LEDs, right? A lot of different brands. And what the one thing that we notice is with Allenson, when we're just specifically talking about power supplies, specifically mm-hmm. in this one, with Allenson, we have <coughs> far fewer returns on Allenson products than we do any other one. And if we broke it down, we sell probably two to one Allenson power supplies to any of the other ones we have available. So To total the other ones. Correct. Like, like we're yeah. literally talking, we sell thousands of Allenson power supplies, hundreds of the other brands. Correct. Correct. So... Well, a big you, thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> so what do you think that, what do you think causes that from Allenson's side of things? Well, well we're talking know. about the returns. Like, so like if you yeah. walk to our return area right now, there's not a single Allenson LED driver in our returns, but there's every other brand we sell is sitting there and you're talking thousands to hundreds. Like, how are you guys figuring out how to make it so much better than everybody else? <laughs> don't, don't, share, don't share I, all your secrets. I, I don't know <laughs> that I have a, a great answer for that, but I do know we design our own, um, we keep close QT on, or quality control on them. Um, and again, I appreciate that. I think Allenson does make an, a top-notch product. You know, one of the interesting things when we were talking about how the industry's changed, Allenson really cut our teeth making ballast and power, uh, excuse me, ballast and transformers. So as the market started changing, I give Allenson huge props for, you know, evolving with it because frankly, we made everything in Toronto and, and, we had a hardcore factory up there. Well, you can't make your own power supplies. You know, you outsource that, but you can make your own design. You can have quality control. You know, you can you can go to the factories and make sure they're giving you what, what you need. So I think um, I appreciate that compliment. And I think Allenson just does pay attention to detail. But we had to get there because if we couldn't make a living on ballast and transformers, we still like that market and we sell a fair amount of them. But quite obviously, it's transitioned into a lot of power supplies. Yeah, I was just at Allenson a couple of weeks ago, and it was very interesting to me. Like, very, very interesting. Like, I thought the most interesting part is, you know, we've all, because when we first had to return transformers, you know, you had to pop the lid off or whatever. Right. And you always saw like that, I don't know, I don't know if it's tar or whatever. It is. And then you always seen these little gritty things. Like, what is all that little gritty things? And then when I'm there and the guy has like that little scoop and he's dumping <laughs> gravel or sand or whatever <laughs> in the top, it was just like, wait a minute, this is like, this is happening right here. Like, <laughs> that's what that stuff is. And like, as someone that's seen them forever, I'm like, they're literally doing it right in front of me. Like exactly what I've seen forever was, it was very interesting to me, like just to see the factory, 
even the ballast with all the different cords, the guys pulling them all. It's, it's amazing. Like, yeah, I mean, it was it's, amazing what they do there. It's I always love going through the factory, and, and even though a lot of it's transition, we still make a lot of product at Allenson, and to see them winding the windings for a transformer or ballast. Yeah, that was cool too. That was yeah. really like I talked about it. I think in the previous podcast, like it yeah. was it yeah. was interesting to say the least, and and see some of the equipment. Like it was old school. Yeah, it was old school, and yeah. it was just like holy cow, this is how this stuff's done. Yeah, and like especially when you've been handling them forever, like it was just like oh, this is pretty neat. Like Tony and I were both like. We didn't want to leave there. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I, th- I think what we don't, what we're trying to change too, but like as an industry, we do a very poor job at a lot of stuff now is coming from overseas, right? That's just the nature of what we've seen for the last 10 years or so. What we don't do a good job at is talking about people that, right, that's in Toronto, right? So you're not sure. United States based, but North American based. And like, what is all coming, at, what are you making in that facility? We do make ballast and transformers still, you know, the hardcore, we don't make the electronics in house. Um, but there's still a fair amount of winding. You know, we um, we also make ignition transformers, and we make a lot of those. Th- those go into heaters, uh, different heating elements. But um, but yeah, we we still make ballast and transformers there. I feel like there's not enough credit to people that haven't just given up and gone overseas because a lot of people have just go that route, right? They're like, we can't compete. We're just going to go overseas versus. I think what you guys are doing is seems like more of like a like a hybrid approach, right? Like I, I can't do everything here, but we can still do a lot and employ a lot of people here. I in. think that's right, and I think I think one thing you said earlier, Tyler, was about the weight. You know, I mean, shipping big old transformers across the ocean probably <laughs> isn't that cost effective. So I don't know if Allenson's you know looked at the cost justification, but we had the equipment. And they now it is a little bit more of a niche. We don't make hundreds of thousands; we make thousands, but we still make a lot. The quality control has got to be way better when you, when you can do it yourself, the quality control has got to be way better than trying to ship it from absolutely overseas for sure. And I saw the people there, like you can tell they're like, they don't want to make a bad one. Yeah. Like you can just tell like yeah. how, just how, how it was. Yeah. I think what, when, what we think, at least when we talk about lack of returns is one of the big differences is I think you guys touch every product that before it gets to us, right? I think some companies are, they might have a headquarters here, right? In, in the States somewhere, but what's really happening is they're coming from overseas in a box and then they're putting that box on a pallet and then we place an order and they take that box and they put it on a skid and they ship it out to us and nobody ever looks at the product, right? They're doing, they might be doing quality control overseas. They have that, like some of them I'm sure do, but it seems like Allenson is taking more of a specific, like very hands-on approach to it. I appreciate that. And I think it's true. We, we do take a good look at the quality. So I think, I think it's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. When you said what they were doing there, I was like, that's, it seems so old school. And you think there's gotta be a better way to do this now. And then when you think about it, you're like, I, there probably isn't, this probably is still the best way to do it. So I think it's cool. Uh, you would think if they're doing it, if they're doing more of it here in North America, you would expect the price to be higher. You're like, Oh, it's American made. So it's more expensive and it's not. So you guys obviously have figured something out that I think some of them haven't still figured out. So well, we appreciate, I appreciate that. There's been a lot come and gone, you know, over the years. Uh, Acton was a big player back in the Transformer days. It, less of somebody that, that was a big competitor. We ended up buying them. But, yeah, it's it's changed a lot. Where do you where do you see the future of, of oh. LEDs and the lighting market? Do you oh see any goodness. changes coming? Oh, for sure. I mean, it's just, you know, one thing we do a pretty big job with is uh, – color changing RGB and that technology keeps on just growing and changing. So I, I think a lot more on the RGB side. Um, we were, we're just too, if I, if I can, we're just introducing a new flexible product where again, I think we've touted the, the benefits of neon and the kind of the downside, but this new flexible is so easy to use and, and you can cut it every quarter inch. Um, it's smaller, but just much more forgiving. So some of the flexible jobs that we couldn't get in the past, uh, for instance, open channel letters. I get calls quite often, you know, the glass has been broken or the service call is so expensive or like you said earlier, it's hard to find a tube bender to fix it. They'd like to upgrade to uh, to an LED product that and I think we finally got one that makes sense in those applications. So we're, we're making our official launch at uh, ISA here in a month or less, but yeah, it's a, it's a really nice product. Yeah, you heard it here. If you're at ISA, stop by Allenson Booth. Look at that flexible product for sure. Good, um, thanks. We do see that as a as a growing market, that flexible product. And 
um, not just RGB, but RGB white yes. is, is making a big push right now. And you guys do do it well. We've, 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 yeah. we've had some projects and stuff like that. So, and they do the border tube too. So if you're doing border tubing, um, they do that stuff too. We do pretty well. Yeah. We, we have both the flexible product and uh, uh rigid product, what we call our skyline. And we've got some lovely projects out there with that. You know, another one that I'm thinking of that, that, I thought I saw it some years back, but it went away. But it's LED sheet where, like, you don't have LEDs, but your plastic lights up. You know, somehow, and I know there's a lot smarter people out there than I. They're probably going, yeah, we've got that, or, you know. But I could see that as a real, why put LEDs in, in a back of a letter if you can light the face up, but just on its own. No yeah. yeah, that's, I think that's the future of what, what's coming. I think there's a lot of things, like, I get to see a lot of that stuff at different things that people push sure. out. Like, I've seen even like a clear glass window turn into an ad. Yeah. And I've seen yeah. a clear glass window turn into an ad that read your phone as you're walking by, which really is oh kind of scary. <laughs> so you better be careful what's in your browser. Be careful when you're taking your selfies. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. Be careful what you've been searching on your phone. Hmm. So. Well, before we end, I wanted to say, I love all my distributors. Once goes a great distributor for us, but you guys have been a little hard on some of the other ones and I don't want to be seen, you know, in that cast, so to speak. That's, yep. that's all. That, yeah. Yeah. We have been a little tough on, no, more manufacturers yeah, than distributors. Yeah. Um, but it would be the same. I mean, like I said, we, the, the, the people we're after are people that we put a lot of time and effort into and then threw us to the garbage. So, <laughs> yeah, but we, but is. we have talked about, we're going to bring other distributors on too. Like, like, uh, GSG will eventually be on here. Mantra will be on here. Like we're all friends. Okay. We're okay. all friends. We're all friends behind the scenes. Well, the science and, supply distribution business is a pretty tight knit group yep. for the most part. And, and as in my opinion, y'all do a great job at Wensco, you know, I'm sitting here with you. So for sure. But, but my other distributors do a great job for me too. So. Yeah, we talked about like when you were just saying that, like some of us threw us to the dirt, you were saying like, you've known Wensco, what? 30 over 40, plus, yeah. over 40 years. So like, that's the kind of, that's what we're talking about here. Like we've known some of these people for so long and like, you've seen it too, right? Like even with Gerber, like we weren't close to those guys too, but you're talking about a company that we've all dealt with for years and years and years. And like, th they're obviously still around, but they, they're discontinuing their printer and you see a little less and less. And it's just like, you're just seeing these companies go away that we've been dealing with for a super long time. And it's, it's just kind of crazy to well, see. It, it's really funny because I, I, Again, I told you that I started out selling Gerber and calling on Harold and junior and senior, they were very anti. At the beginning, they did not want equipment. They were like, and they came kicking and screaming a little bit to the consumables because that was almost a natural. But I don't know how long it took to, to get Wentzko going with. And once you did, boy, it was off to the races. But yeah. Yeah, it took a while. I mean, we, we created, we didn't create, Advantage created themselves. But when we decided not to do Gerber, and they did, I mean, Advantage was built off that Gerber machine, and rightfully so. Yeah. It was a good machine. And, and I was actually at Gerber, and believe it or not, and everybody that's listening, there were two people that made almost every single Gerber Edge <laughs> and, and Plotter. Like, two people, literally, like, she made one a day or, or something like that. And it was, it was amazing to see. And then when those people retired, that's when the quality went down a little bit. But... Mm. Basically, it was two people making all those machines, and that's why they were so good. And for so long, like it was, it was amazing to see. Like I used to be able to travel there four times a year. We had quarterly meetings, and it was impressive, no doubt about it. Oh, it's impressive. So, Tim, we just wanted to thank you for coming on. Obviously, this wasn't really planned. We just kind of dropped you in here, uh, and we appreciate it. Someone with your uh, experience in the industry, it's great to have somebody like that on. So, we appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Yeah, we just know you'll always be the very first guest we had. So, no matter how many we do, when we get into the thousands. You were the first guest. You were the most important. That's why we had you on first. <laughs> well, I appreciate so we appreciate all that you. And the invitation. Thanks, yeah. guys. All right. Thank you much. Yeah, thanks for having. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks. Thanks.